I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome here, everyone. And at this time, I would like to give the opening to Councillor Jay Kiebert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A recent prominent concern of the citizens of this city is the perceived influx of homeless people and the visibility of their possessions. I'd like to preface this opening by saying this council is aware of the issues and is working to address them. There were our 12 or so people that frequent the old vacuum cleaner property, as well as the property behind Lettingham car dealership. I've made it a point to stop by each day for the past two weeks in dialogue with these individuals, all of whom have a name. These individuals are the first to admit that caring people who drop off food are providing a temporary fix. Communal housing is not what they are seeking. They identified their needs as being long-term places to live, a job, mental health and drug addiction intervention, along with immediate medical care. Methamphetamine appears to be the drug of choice among these homeless. Some of the homeless women are struggling with previous rapes and abuse. Communal housing is frowned upon. We must realize that homeless people struggling with mental health and drug issues don't trust each other. They would rather live in an area with two or three persons that they can trust, people who will not steal their drugs, their money, or their recently acquired possessions. This past week, I heard that several of the homeless people have stolen from others and now have moved out. On Saturday, there were only four people left in the vacuum cleaner property encampment. I could be convinced that places that provide food and people envisioning an overnight shelter on cold nights have the best of intentions. They care for the homeless person as an individual. However, this is not what the homeless are identifying to me as a need. Feeding the homeless is making everyday life a little better and may very well extend their life on earth. In Steinbeck, we're expecting people to overdose, are we expecting people to overdose on fentanyl, laced meth, and cannabis? In Canada, 47, just over 47,000 persons since 2016 have died of overdoses. Vancouver last year had 10,500 deaths uh, from overdoses, which is up by 34%. The people in our encampments, in my opinion, require long-term drug and mental intervention, followed by housing and employment. Some of the homeless talked to, prior to homelessness, were carpenters, masons, they ran fairly large companies, and, or they were truck drivers. This last week I had an opportunity to tour a second stage housing complex in Winnipeg called the Transitional Supportive Recovery Housing Facility in Winnipeg run by the Riverwood Church near Stadacona and Talbot. This is an $8 million facility. After drug treatment and intervention, these homeless tenants are assisted in finding employment and independent housing. I learned that homeless people from Steinbeck have been utilizing this facility and, buildings, uh, and the building structure, uh, and building structure in their lives while living there. In doing my research, I'm convinced that the homeless need to be introduced to places and facilities where there is help available. Steinbeck does not have such adequate resources. Once a homeless community is built and exists, it requires infrastructure and resources, including professional medical people, drug treatment, social services, extra policing, health care intervention, sanitary facilities, etc. Again, similar to Teen Challenge, long-term drug treatment is the answer for the homeless struggling with addiction. Others require mental health intervention along with medication. People may say I don't have a handle on what's happening. Fair. If council remembers in my opening several months ago, I spoke about experiencing the homeless in Winnipeg as a young police officer in the early 70s. Since then, I've spent 39 years in policing, including Vancouver Drug Section, <coughs> undercover assignments where I lived with drug dealers, users. I was a judge at, for prisoners at Stony Mountain. I spent six years on the Parole Board of Canada, interviewing prisoners, applying for release, including drug users and dealers. I recently resigned from the Government of Manitoba Vulnerable Abuse Registry after six years, and now I'm on my fourth year sitting on the Provincial Government Criminal Code Review Board. This board is chaired by a judge and includes a psychiatrist and me as a layperson. Here we are, here we deal with individuals that through drugs and mental illness often committed heinous crimes. Subsequent to being convicted, a judge determined them to be unfit to stand trial or found them criminally not responsible at the time of the offense. Most of these individuals suffer from schizophrenia and or mental issues, often induced by drugs. <coughs> I've been involved in over 50 years in public safety. I want the citizens of this community to know that this council, again, is aware of the issues and is determining the best solutions to deal effectively with homeless in our community. 
I recently read a book called Crooked Smile, where the writer, a 10-year drug abuser in Los Angeles, Skid Row, lived homeless, did whatever he had to do to get drugs, and saw as many acquaintances on the street overdose and die. According to this writer, the answer to homelessness is not safe injection sites or food or shelter. To have drugs at his disposal was the everyday priority of this drug user. In closing, I would like to read one paragraph or partial paragraph from the book where the writer, after being convicted on uh, felony charges, states this. The proper deal should have been the opinion of no felony charge after mandatory year-long job placement. So what he's saying is the best thing for the people, especially after his felony charge, should have been long year, a, a lo at least a one-year long placement. That would have been the truly progressive approach that I hope the rest of society is on the brink of discovering, but it might take a few more years of utter failure to convince the more stubborn. Then he goes on, I'm not talking about drug porn, I'm not talking about 20 day, 20 day, 28 day human warehouse facility, I'm talking about comprehensive, publicly funded long term treatment centers that equip the formerly addicted with a reasonable shot at prosperity psychiatric services, permanent care for those that are mentally unfit, and specific skilled train, training that feeds people directly into the trades and labor lacking fields of industry. Some of, the prob some of you probably think I'm dreaming, he says, but you may be in for a surprise before the end of the decade. It all depends on how many more bodies those in power are willing to ignore. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hebert, for your opening. Council, we have the agenda in front of us. And before we, uh, I ask for a motion to adopt, I would just like to add one item under eight reports and recommendations from City Manager. Uh, Mr. Workning has re uh, prepared a storm report of the last uh, 24 hours, and, uh, and I'd like to give him an opportunity to report that to us. So we'll just add that, and then looking for a motion to approve. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Hebert. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Council, we have the minutes of September 3rd, 2024, the regular council meeting. Looking for a motion to approve. Councillor Stevens, second by Councillor Hebert. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Uh, council, is any business arising from the minutes? Okay, seeing none, at this time, I would like to ask for a motion to excuse uh, Councillor Susan Pinner. Councillor Swigster, second by Councillor Hebert. Call for the question, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Uh, we're just a little after 7.35, so we'll move directly into the public hearings. Uh, we will take 6A, which is variance V, 2024-12. This is referring to 322 Reimer Avenue. At this time, I will close the council meeting, open the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Workating, could you please introduce this file? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and for members of council, this uh, public hearing uh, is to consider uh, the file variance file V-2024-12 uh, for a property with a civic address of 322 Reimer Avenue in Steinbeck. Uh, both the owner and the of the property and the applicant for the variance. Uh, is 6135367 Manitoba Inc. Purpose of the variance uh, is twofold. First of all, to permit a detached accessory building to have a total uh, size of 1,232 square feet, whereas single family dwellings and their accessory uses within the C2 commercial community zone may have a maximum uh, size of 700 square feet. And secondly, uh, the, that the proposed accessory structure have a maximum height of 29.5 feet, whereas uh, City of Steinbeck zoning, zoning bylaw permits a maximum height of 15 feet. Uh, the uh, applicant, as I mentioned, is proposing to construct a detached garage uh, on the rear portion of the subject property. Notices as are required by the Planning Act have been issued. Uh, there is no written correspondence on file. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, the, uh, the proposal, uh, the subject property does contain an existing two-story structure. Uh, 
uh, with the lot having dimensions of 80 by 195 feet. Uh, a site plan uh, was not provided uh, by the applicant at the time of writing of this report. Um, administration has also provided council with several uh, precedent files uh, where various access accessory uh, structures uh, of uh, sizes that actually exceed the proposed uh, uh, the proposed structure uh, have been approved. However, uh, administration would also like to point out uh, to council that the proposed structure uh, is intended to have at least uh, uh, a portion of the area uh, as a second story, uh, which uh, we believe gives rise to, uh, to the request of the, uh, of the height variance as well. Uh, with respect to the application, uh, council uh, will need to uh, review uh, and consider whether or not there may be detrimental impacts to the neighborhood. Uh, and at any event, uh, should council choose to approve uh, this uh, particular application, um, administration also recommends that uh, the uh, uh, application also be subject to the city's approval uh, of a proponent provided lot grading plan for the subject property. Thank you, Mr. Rortine. Is the applicant here today? Uh, do you wish to speak? Hi, everyone. Uh, 37 years ago, I grew up next door um, to 322 Reimer, this house um, where Envision currently is the neighbor uh, to the west. Um, the house obviously no longer there. Um, and about a year ago, I ran into my old neighbor who's lived in this house since he was a, a young man, um, over 45 years, I think he lived there. And I asked him, you know, if you ever want to sell your house, please let me know, because uh, it was always special to me. I had heart surgery when I was four years old, and I have some photos of myself biking down that road and carried my hockey bag to the Centennial. It was a, a special property for me, and I didn't want to see it bulldozed. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have my dad here today. He works with me and um, to move him into that house, which is kind of cool, because I live out in the country, so I, I never intended to live there myself, but... I wanted to restore the home. We've already done a new roof on it. Uh, we have plans to uh, refurbish the exterior with like a plaster so that it actually still looks like a, the old house that it was. It was a, it's a unique architecturally designed house from I think the 40s, so it's pretty cool. Um, however, the one negative about this house is it is on an 80, well, I thought it was 82, but 80 foot uh, lot, very wide, but yet they built the house wide, not deep. So the, the garage, me and my dad were joking about it. It's like a, it almost like a lean-to. It, it kind of seems a bit like an afterthought when they built the house. I don't know if it was actually built after, but it's not even big enough to fit a regular-sized car, never mind an SUV or truck. So it really has basically no garage. We, he has like a little bit of storage in there, kind of like a shed. But unfortunately, there's not really room or it doesn't make sense to, to tear it off because you, it's so close to the side. You can, you can drive past it. But other than that, there's like, you'd have to tear it off to even have like a small oversized single garage, and then you couldn't get to the backyard. So that's why we would like to build uh, this garage um, to have storage for uh, my, uh, my car, uh, a car that I have that I don't want to park on gravel, and, uh, and uh, my dad's vehicle, motorcycle, stuff like that. Um, there's no plan to do any like suite in it or anything. Just want to have a second story for, have the ability to have extra storage and a, a space up there. Um, for me and my dad to, to use, and that's that's about all I want to share. Uh, Councilor, are there any questions for the applicant? Uh, go ahead, Councilor. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Have you talked to the neighbor? Yep, I talked to Envision today, and they said that they didn't have any problems, and then Norm Sankey lives on the other side, and then you guys are the other neighbor on the library is at the back there, so there's no other neighbors directly beside. And I, I mentioned to Envision that we'd like to do it on the northwest side. The reason we didn't submit a site plan yet is they, we did ask if that was required. It wasn't yet. Um, and because we don't know exactly how close we want to put it to the back tree line on the north. Um, and we want to keep as many of those trees as possible. In fact, the way it is, we think we can keep all the tree line. And then on the, I guess, west northwest side would be the lowest uh, shrub that isn't that private for the parking lot of Envision. So this would be a perfect uh, barrier for them to have... And their only request is that we'd like our, some of our folks to be able to watch the construction. So I said, that's great. And Norm, Mr. Sankey had no, no issues with it. We have a great relationship with him as well. More? Yeah, through you. Uh, 
<clears throat> you're absolutely right. That house has been around for a very long time. It's part in the older part of town, and it is on a lot, and uh, it has never been subject to city's lot grading policies. They all came after the construction of the property. Okay, yeah. So one of the requirements here uh, that we have, uh, the recommendations, is that we ask for a lot grading plan or, or a site plan because you have to manage your own yep. water in your site. Do you understand? Yep. No problem. Do you have uh, any issues with Not a problem at all. Any no. of that? We have no problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anything further of council? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your presentation. Is there anyone here with questions, comments, or objections to this file? I see none, but I will ask again. Is there anyone here with comments, questions, or objections to this file? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the um, public hearing, open the council meeting. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councilor Stevens? Make a motion uh, to approve with uh, the condition that uh, they need to also provide the city with uh, a site plan that includes a lot grading plan to manage the water. Thank you. Is there a second or uh, Councillor Penner? Go ahead, Councillor Seaman. Uh, thank you. I think this is an area of town that has these large old lots. Uh, Mr. Weeb is absolutely correct that there's uh, these are lots that uh, uh, have these old grand homes in Steinbeck uh, along that stretch, and they are nice. Uh, I agree with that. And... Uh, this would add to it. I don't. Uh, I think I don't have a problem with uh, putting this garage on on that site, uh, whatever that looks like. And uh, but I, are some concerns about the drainage uh, that they need to manage the water uh, drainage of that site because those sites were built without a lot grading plan uh, when they were built. So and so this could disrupt the drainage plan that is there, the natural draining plan that has been uh, there for the last 40 to 50 years. So it's important to put a proper lot grading plan that they can manage the water on the site due to the, having uh, the amount of roof that goes along with this build. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Each variance is done on a case-by-case -case basis, and there's a few few items here that, uh, that warrants that I feel it's good to approve. First and foremost, there's no objections from the neighbourhood. Uh, the neighbour, Mr. Sankey, is okay with it, as, as per Mr. Weeb's uh, uh, comments. Uh, on the rear, there's, there's uh, quite a bit of trees, as well as just the, uh, the flower garden. And then on the other side is, is uh, Eden, and they haven't uh, given any issues either. Uh, this lot is an old lot. It's triple the size of a regular lot, and it's also located in the Central Business District. Central Business District, we don't know exactly how that's going to look 5, 10, 15 years from now. And there could potentially be a lot of height, just as there's a lot of height right across the street from there with the event center going up. Mm -hmm. And so with that lot being triple the size, square footage isn't a concern for me on this particular property. And with the height on, across the street and the surrounding properties being okay with it, I don't see any reason to not apply, uh, approve this application. Thank you. Anything further? Go ahead, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm a stickler for variances that they're not broken, but you know, I don't mind if they're modified and uh, apply some leniency. But here we're looking at 1,232 square feet when we're only allowed 700 square feet. <clears throat> and we're also looking at a 29 foot height when only 15 feet is allowed. I, like I said, uh, when it comes to counts uh, to these variances, uh, I'm a bit of a stickler. However, what's going for this lot is the size, that there's no objections. We've got uh, high buildings across the street, the hospital there. We've got Envision uh, in that area, which is, I believe, educational zoning. So uh, in this case, I think I'm persuaded that this properly that pr this probably is a uh, a good uh, one to go on. As Councillor Siemens has said, as long as there's the uh, drainage on this property, the proper drainage plan. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Anything in closing? No, sir. Well, Council, uh, I do too. Um, as you all know, we, we, we owned a heritage property, a heritage home in our downtown, and it, that was a large lot as well. 
again, uh, it was a narrow but long garage, so it was okay for us, you know. And, but uh, what we did have is two large oversized um, outbuildings towards the back. And that was very handy for storage and just, and we had the room, so it worked out very good. And I do believe that, that will, it'll work out well here too. I think there's, there's plenty of room and, uh, and I think this, this makes sense to have the, 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 all these items under cover instead of out in the open. So uh, I think this will, this will work. I, I'm very happy that you've gone to your neighbors. I'm glad that they have no concerns with it. You've built a rapport with them and you've got a good relationship with them. I, that helps, right? Uh, when we wanna do things in our neighborhoods, it helps to get along with our neighbors. So I'm very glad that, of what you've done. So uh, council, I will support this motion. Call for the question, all those in favor? Opposed, that is carried, thank you. Okay, council, we'll move on to uh, 6B. This is variance V2024-13. This is referring to 98 Industrial Road. At this time, I will close the council meeting, open the public hearing. Mr. Workney, could you please introduce this file? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, application for variance file V-2024-13 uh, is affecting a property with a civic address of 98 Industrial Road. The owner of the property is 663-4479 Manitoba LTD. The applicant of the variance is Three Way Builders LTD. Purpose of the application is to permit barbed wire top a fence in the uh, M1 light industrial zone whereas City of Steinbach Zoning Bylaw 2100 only permits barbed wire atop fences in the M2 heavy industrial zone. Notices as are required under the Planning Act have been issued. There is no written correspondence on file. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, administration has provided uh, background reports uh, for Council's uh, review and consideration. Uh, has, uh, and, and has also provided information on uh, some precedent uh, files that council has considered uh, more recently. Uh, and uh, with respect to the application, uh, the owner's stated purpose is to protect its assets pursuant to its insurance purposes. Recommendation from administration is for council to approve. Thank you, Mr. Organtine. Is the applicant here today? Do you wish to speak? Oh, okay. I'm owner, yes. Okay. <clears throat> All I ask is that you uh, state your name, and address and then sure uh my name is oliver cop um from the rental house which will be the tenant for 98 industrial uh we're currently at 260 park road west um this will be our new location starting hopefully in the next couple months uh, most likely december we currently have barbed wire on our fence to protect our rental equipment um that sits in our yard we have quite a lot of equipment that sits outside yearly um or day to day and this just prevents theft. It also allows us to lower our insurance as our insurance policy requires us to have some kind of secured yard. Um, the alternative, sorry, the alternative to it is to actually put concrete barriers around inside the fence, still having a fence and so on, which is a very costly, expensive version for what barbed wire can do. Um, due to the location that it is, there's not a lot of lighting. It's still a development area. Um, there's no residential nearby. We don't feel it will be a problem. Um, due to safety concerns or people walking down the road is there's no sidewalks, there's really no foot press for anyone to go down. Um, so basically, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, just one second. Is there any questions for the applicant? Okay, thanks for your presentation. I would like to ask if there's any questions, comments or objections to this file. Okay, I see none, but I will ask one more time. Is there any questions, comments, or objections to this file? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing, open the council meeting. Council, how would you like to proceed? Council Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion to approve the variance. Do we have, and second by Councillor Hebert. Go ahead, Councillor Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There is a precedent for allowing barbed wire at, uh, at, at locations like this. Uh, I think the applicant has made a very good case, a straightforward one for why this is being requested. 
Uh, obviously, this business wants to protect its assets. That is understandable. And obviously, the type of uh, security you put in place can affect insurance rates. And uh, so we certainly, uh, we certainly recognize that. There is no objection from anyone in the neighborhood, and our staff are recommending approval. So based on all those factors, I think it makes sense to approve the variance. Thank you. Anything further? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also agree with what uh, Councillor Spectra has noted, and uh, specifically the fact that there's no neighbor, residential neighbors in that area, and that there's no sidewalks, makes it fairly easy for me to accept the barbed wire on top of the fence for security reasons. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anything further, Council? Anything closing? Well, Council, this seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, seems to be uh, a reasonable request, given given the area, given the reason for it. So, uh, call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Okay, Council. We have uh, we have no delegations, so we'll move over to reports and recommendations of City Manager. This is the item we added. Uh, this is the uh, storm report of the last 24 hours. Mr. Workatin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this, uh, given the events of the last 24 hours, I uh, thought it uh, prudent for uh, administration to provide uh, council with a bit of an update uh, as the city has experienced a pretty significant uh, uh, storm uh, over the last uh, day or so. Uh, it started the uh, the evening and night of uh, Monday, September 16th, and into this morning, uh, with uh, rainfall uh, being intermittent until uh, around mid-afternoon. Uh, according to media reports, a total of approximately six inches of rain fell in Steinbeck and area uh, during this period. And due to the saturated ground conditions and the amount of rain that fell, uh, especially during this morning, the city experienced significant overland uh, stormwater flows in all neighborhoods. Uh, the city's open drainage channels, creeks and ditches uh, throughout the city uh, were either at capacity or over capacity with uh, some spilling over their banks. Uh, and as the storm intensified, the stormwater flood pump at the city's main lift station on Park Road West uh, began operating at 9 a.m. today. Uh, and it continues to be in operation uh, until uh, the sewer system flows uh, return to normal ranges. Uh, this flood pump capacity uh, is at 485 liters per second. And uh, levels, uh, I just got an update from uh, the city's waterworks manager. Uh, the uh, levels within the city's uh, sewer system are, are still exceeding normal. Uh, and uh, it's expected that that flood pump will continue operation into uh, uh, later this evening. Uh, all of the city's lift stations were functional and pumping at full capacity during a storm event. Uh, and. Uh, Overland uh, stormwater flows uh, impacted many city roads uh, with uh, particular note Park Road East, Mackenzie Avenue and Grandview Drive being some areas where uh, the streets were actually overtopped and that's where they, uh, where they uh, cross uh, the existing uh, creeks within Steinbeck. Uh, many of the city's peripheral gravel roads were also impacted uh, and 16 washout areas have been identified by staff uh, as of the end of today. Uh, and uh, the T.G. Smith Centre uh, site experienced some overland flooding with water entering the building this morning. Uh, unfortunately, as a result, the ice surface has been lost. Uh, the ice making process must uh, start over uh, with the ice expected to be, be restored and be playable in about two weeks. And if uh, staff are able to make it happen uh, more quickly, they will certainly try to do so. Uh, city staff are continuing to work into the evening and to tonight uh, to monitor and maintain the city's facilities until uh, normal operations can be restored. Uh, it may take several days uh, for administration to conduct a full assessment uh, of the impacts on city facilities and infrastructure. Uh, and uh, also more significantly to determine the number of residential or other private properties uh, affected by either overland flooding or sewer backups. Thank you very much. Uh Council, any questions for administration? I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you very much for that uh, for that info. Uh, that will definitely help as we as we talk to uh, residents in the next few days. Thank you. We'll move on to to nine uh, A administration accounts payable. Back of the book. 
Uh, we've all had a chance to review, looking for a motion to approve. Councillor Hebert. Right, Councillor Hebert. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. We also have the financial statements ending July 31st, 2024, back of the book. Uh, also looking for a motion to approve. Councillor Siemens, second by Councillor Penner. Any comments? Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, we've got 9C uh, on page 28. We've got the building permits for August. Looking for a motion to approve. Councillor Swaystra, second by Councillor he Hebert. Any comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The month of August, we had uh, uh, just over $2 million in uh, building permits issued, uh, one, uh, just under $1.3 million in residential and $750,000 in, uh, in commercial. And so the year to date to this point is $53 million, so a strong year overall. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what happens in the rest of the year. Thank you. Anything further? No further comment. Okay. Anything further of Council? Nothing closing? No. Okay. Uh, Council, yes, I think, uh, yeah, August might have been, it might slow down a little bit, but um, all in all, it's still a very good year, and there's still uh, many projects that are getting talked about that are coming in the future. Uh, we did add a couple of uh, dwelling units, five, for a total of 156 dwelling units for the, for the year so far. So that, that's a pretty good number. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay. I need to step out for this one in conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> We've got 9D. This is rezoning bylaw 2250. Uh, this is referring to 33 Lowen Boulevard. This is first reading. Uh, this will, st this will uh, initiate a public hearing down the road. Uh, Mr. Warting, could you please introduce this file? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this uh, particular application under bylaw 2250 is a rezoning application uh, with the owner of the property uh, being Steinbeck Bible College, Inc., uh, with the applicant uh, for the uh, proposed bylaw being Abe G. Bergen. Uh, purpose of bylaw 2250 is to rezone the subject property from C4 Commercial Regional to EI Educational Institution, uh, Institutional. Uh, to uh, allow for the relocation of the Steinbeck Bible College. Uh, the particular property is also located at 333 Lowen Boulevard, and it's the uh, site of the former Steinbeck Family Medical Center. Uh, the uh, recommendation from administration is for council to give this bylaw first reading, uh, and if first reading is approved, then a public hearing could be scheduled for October the 15th. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Orting. Council, how would you like to proceed? Motion to approve. Second by Councilor Heber. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a building. The former family medical center, as stated, has been empty for three, four, maybe five years uh, since we built the new medical center on Stonebridge Crossing. So this has been empty and in need of a tenant or a new owner. It's been, it's gone through a number of different owners with uh, different plans. The latest one now is the uh, Stomach Bible College, which is which is great that uh, somebody wants to use that building and they need to repurpose it. And they also want to change the, <coughs> the zoning from uh, C4 to uh, educational institutional. So uh, we need to pass first reading, then we can go to public hearing and uh, hear what the neighbors and other people in Steinbeck have to say about it. Thank you. Anything further? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I agree with what uh, Councillor Siemens has just said. It's nice to see the old medical building uh, again being refurbished and being reused. Uh, and it's nice to see that uh, this will now be changed to an educational facility and zoning. And we're going to have students there. We're going to have housing there. Uh, uh, I just think it's a great, uh, great building and use in that area, which is largely residential. So uh, I'm excited that uh, it's been purchased and. Uh, looking for the renovations. Anything further? Anything closing? Yes, sir. Yes, Council, that, is, uh, that has been a property that's been empty for some time. It's been empty ever since we, we had the new uh, care clinic. 
uh, doctor clinic. And um, I think, too, I'm looking forward to this. I, th I, I want to see what the, what the people, the public will say, the neighborhood. Uh, there, have been, there have been different times it's, that properties come to council for different reasons and different uses. And i um, just excited to see what could happen maybe with this property now. And, and just uh, I love the, the public hearing process because we get to hear from the residents. And that's, that's what's great. Call for the question. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. So we're looking forward to that was October 15th-ish? Yes, uh, that's the anticipated uh, date of the public hearing. Thank you very much. Okay, council. Um, council question period. Are there any questions of council? Council Swakes, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sure that uh, other members of council have heard from the public on this one as well, and that is in regard to the uh, encampment on Main Street. Uh, Councillor Hebert, of course, made reference to it in his opening. Um, and the universal feedback that I've heard is that there's significant concern uh, regarding the safety for uh, the people in the area, the businesses, and frankly for the people who have been in the encampment themselves. And so um, I would like to put out there as a question to our, to our city manager in terms of is there any information that he has that, you know, that, that, any, that has come to the city in regards to this and uh, I'd also like to put it out to council. Is there something, do we want to, um, you know, look into some options in regards to our bylaws? Uh, what type of mechanisms might be at our disposal? What do other cities do in regards to uh, uh, dealing with this challenge? Because even when this particular uh, property is, is addressed, uh, we know that the issue will, will, come, will come up elsewhere. Because it's clearly unacceptable. We cannot have people simply encamping um, in, uh, in, in, in areas like that in Steinbeck. It's not safe, uh, not appropriate, and that's the universal feedback that I've heard from people, and I, I agree with that feedback. So I just wanted to put it out, out there to our city manager in terms of is there uh, any information in regards to that, you know, in terms of the city's as uh, uh, received in regards to this, and to council, is there any steps that we're looking to potentially take? Uh, thank you, Councillor Zweigstra. Uh, just for council's information, uh, through uh, the past several years, uh, the City of Steinbeck has been involved uh, on a case-by-case basis on, uh, on uh, several different locations uh, of uh, uh, homeless encampments within, uh, within Steinbeck. Uh, in all cases, uh, city staff that have been uh, uh, part uh, of any interaction um, have uh, dealt with several groups. Uh, primarily, it, uh, it starts with the property owner. Uh, the city has also been in contact with the RCMP uh, and also with a variety of uh, nonprofit agencies and, uh, and social uh, support agencies that uh, are operating in Steinbach. Uh, and that, uh, uh, does sometimes uh, change. Uh, involvement uh, does vary from time to time, but it always is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, with respect to the particular uh, location that Councillor Zwagstra referred to, uh, that uh, is a uh, site of a former business uh, property in Steinbeck on Main Street at 447 Main Street, uh, did, uh, uh, was uh, <clears throat> impacted by uh, a building fire uh, earlier this year, uh, and uh, the property still uh, sits in uh, in its uh, uh, state uh, since the fire, and uh, the building has not been torn down. Uh, there, uh, there has been an encampment that uh, that was uh, first noticed uh, sometime in August. Uh, the city's understanding is that uh, the property owner. Uh, and uh, other individuals who have been connected with that property uh, have been attempting to deal with the issue. Uh, I, as I understand it, uh, the, uh, the owner uh, or individuals acting on behalf of the owner uh, did serve a formal uh, trespass notice uh, to all of the uh, individuals that were uh, present on the property uh, as of September the 5th. And it is my understanding that uh, as of Monday, September the 16th, 
that all individuals uh, had left uh, or otherwise vacated that property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the effort here to understand the role of council and really the, the or the city in in the homeless uh, situation. And that that begs a couple of questions: Is uh, what is the role of city council in this? Uh, when we get phone calls, and we've all had phone calls. Uh, to do something about it, and I agree, we need to do something about it, but what is it that we do? At FCM in, in Calgary, at our national conference, uh, we dealt with that issue. We saw firsthand the issue in Calgary, and so it's, it's an issue that's across our, our nation, not uh, just in our community, but it does affect us here too. So what's the, then the question is, what's the role of city, uh, the city of Steinbeck and, and city council within this? Our job here is basically is under the Manitoba Act that we work under, we are responsible for infrastructure for parks, we're responsible for policy and bylaws and zoning, uh, community plans, our uh, long-term plans. And uh, is this a social issue that we have to now deal with, uh, start to be involved with? How many tax dollars do we put towards social issues? We do have a lot of good social services in Steinbeck that are, are run through uh, uh, donations and various organizations, including our churches. We have a strong organization since time back that uh, provide a lot of support. Uh, one of the roles of council also is to put protection to place, and we have that. We have that with our RCMP. We also have that with a bylaw inspector who enforces our bylaws and uh, various things. So uh, I appreciate the fact that we ask uh, administration for uh, for a review and, uh, and a follow-up to this, uh, which will start a uh, discussion at, at City Council, but maybe also a, a community discussion as part of it when it is released. So I think uh, I'm very much in favor of uh, getting administration to begin the process. Okay. Anything further? Uh, anything, anything to add? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, just to be clear, I mean, one of the things that uh, that I've you know certainly heard reports of is that when people are dropping off you know food and donations there, that is not the most helpful thing people can do. If you want to help, you know we've heard this consistently from many different organizations. Donate to the organizations that are actively working with at-risk people who actually know how to target it better. So donate to good organizations such as Steinbeck Community Outreach, Helping Hands, Soup on, Soups on. You know, you know, if we want, in terms of just in terms of more immediately, if people want to donate individually, that is a far better way to donate than to, because we don't want these encampments to continue. Uh, and so what I'm looking for in regards to, because uh, we, we can't ask our staff, they're not going to solve this problem, they're not going to come up with, with a solution here. But in terms of, you know, giving some information to council in regards to, you know, what are some of the potential tools that council could have, like, is what are some of the bylaws, for example, that other municipalities have in place addressing these types of encampments? And is there something we can learn from some of these other municipalities in regards to what, what they do? And uh, so that's the kind of direction that I'm hoping to go because even, again, it's good to hear that you know, this, this one has been mostly or entirely vacated, um, but we know that the issue will come up again in the future and we need to be prepared to deal with it. Is, uh, you know, Council, I, I do agree and I, I, I respect and I think that we, that we have administration that is, that is working on this and that we have a, a community safety officer that is going out there and, and, and working with the, the, home own, the, the property owners and working with the RCMP to, to resolve the issues that are there. But what I, what I would ask is that we ask our administration exactly as, as uh, Council Swagster has said, to look into it to see what other communities are doing. I would actually like to, for, for what to come out of this is actually a policy that we can follow. Because that's what we do, we set policy as, as we were told by um, Councillor Siemens and that is one of the things we do, we, we do city planning. This is part of, I believe this is part of our planning. We need, and it would be nice to have a policy and I'm not saying that we have to put, like, we don't put money into social programs, but that we have a policy to deal with these, that we, that we can have, and this is, this is the way we go. And we already do. They already go through that way. And it, 
through uh, the certain avenues, and it does always start with the property owner. But I, I would like to have, I think, a documented written policy. Uh, Mr. Warren, do we have a written policy on this at this time? Uh, no, there is, uh, there is no specific direction, uh, certainly not one uh, process that's been approved by council. Uh, as uh, maybe in my own mind, I, I referred to it in my uh, earlier comments, but uh, in general, uh, city administration has uh, to date approached this particular matter as it's a community-based issue. It's not a city of Steinbeck as an organization issue. Uh, there are many factors related to uh, homelessness and it can run an extremely broad range of uh, specific issues that the city has no knowledge of experience of or expertise uh, in, in dealing with. Uh, that is up to, uh, again, a community-based uh, group approach that involves the property owner, the RCMP, and most importantly, the social service agencies who have the expertise and the experience that are able to best able uh, respond to the particular issues uh, surrounding this particular uh, matter. Uh, what the city of Steinbach through its administration tries to do is be a facilitator to, uh, if nothing else, um, try and get the appropriate uh, resources uh, together uh, so that the issue can be at least, uh, or sorry, at least an attempt can be made to resolve an issue. Uh, as we have seen more recently, it's uh, something that uh, is continuing to perpetuate uh, and it's an extremely difficult uh, problem to find a solution for. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, that, you know what, thank you for your comments, uh, Mr. Wartin. Um, I, and I agree, it is, it, they're case by case, each one is individual, each encampment is different, and they need to be dealt with um, individually as well. But council, uh, do you, <clears throat> is there consensus for what Council Swayster is asking that we get, uh, that we just have administration look at what other communities are doing so that we can, that we can figure out where we stand, what we need to do as, as a community. And, and, um, and I think that might be the best. So, uh, Mr. Rorkney, I would put that on you and your administration and then uh, to report back to us. And then, um, yeah, just so we can get some feedback. Because uh, we also want to help the people in our community and what is the best way. And I, I do believe uh, Councilor Swayster said it, said it as well. Um, I think it's best to donate or give to the to the organizations that deal with 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 the concerns that are there. Um, we don't know what we're dealing with when we we mean well, but we don't know what we're dealing with. And I think it's best to to go through an organization. If these people are to be helped, I think they need to be helped by an organization that understands their needs and what they need to be what needs to happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got 11A, correspondence and petitions. We have a letter from the uh, Manitoba Consumer Protection and Government Services. This is referring to Canada Community Building Fund, CCBF allocations. Council, how would you like to proceed? Take his information. Yes, okay. please. And we've got 11B, we have a letter from Harv's Air. This is referring to the SLI Tower, the Tower Proposal. Council, we've all read the, uh, the, the letter that he's, he is, is written. He's asking us to write a letter in support to relocate the tower or the height, change the height as it causes uh, danger for his pilots. Council, how would you like to proceed? Council Swakestra? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll put a motion uh, forward, and if there's a seconder, then I'll speak to it. And uh, the motion is very simple that the City of Steinbeck write a letter expressing support for the concerns raised by Harbs Air regarding the location of this tower. Okay. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Penner? 
Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, when we first received the information that this, uh, uh, this cell tower was going in place, uh, that was all the information that we had. And again, this, this is not something that is initiated by the city of Stymic. Obviously, this is well outside of our jurisdiction in that regard, but we do get notified as part of the process. And I think it's important to note that Harves Air is a very uh, busy airport, a very busy flying school. Uh, they're a respected business in our area. And they're, they, as noted in the letter here, they train a lot of pilots, they have a lot of planes, and they have some significant concerns uh, regarding the location of this tower. The tower's height is significant, and this is right in their, uh, in their flight circuit. And they're concerned about safety. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I really hope that Transport Canada takes seriously when this information is forwarded to them. I think by the City of Stomach adding its voice to the concern and just that you know, where we send them a letter saying that we recognize the importance of their business and that we urge uh, the federal government, Transport Canada, to take these concerns seriously and into consideration, I think that is something that we should do as a city in regards to supporting a local business that plays such an important role in our area. So I, that's why I think we should send the letter. Thank you. Anything further? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's, uh, there's not a lot of uh, authority or power that we as municipally elected officials have, but at the same time, we do have a voice and we have a voice that we should uh, r rise up and, and uh, make sure is heard when there's uh, citizens and local businesses that are, that are wanting to hear our, our voice. Uh, I hear, uh, or, pardon me, I, I live right underneath the flight circuit of Harv's Air and I can, I, I'm actually surprised that it's only 150 times a day on average that they say <laughs> that they're gonna fly over there because it is a very busy airport. This isn't just some uh, casual farmer that's going out to, uh, for an evening flight. Uh, this airport is going, well, airport air school is going nonstop, almost, almost uh, 12 hours a day, if not longer, when they're doing their night training. And uh, if this, if Mr. Penner has seen that this is going to be an issue, uh, his business has been here much longer than the cell tower, which hasn't, doesn't have a foundation yet. So uh, I think the precedent should go towards him and I feel like it's appropriate for the city of Stymex voice to echo his concerns. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Siemens. Uh, thank you. I agree with, uh, with the motion and, and the comments made. The, this is a, uh, a piece of, of Steinbeck. This has been part of Steinbeck for the last 50 years. And uh, so, but, and many planes, many pilots. So they are part of our economic uh, <coughs> engine, so to speak, of, of Steinbeck. Uh, I'm also very surprised that uh, Transport Canada or NAVCAN and the CRTC don't talk to each other. They're two federal organizations that uh, would play a critical role in both of these and uh, towers. Uh, that they're marked properly, and uh, I'm not a pilot, but every once in a while when pilots talk about the structures that are in play in, in various places and, and what that controls, uh, it, it's amazing that uh, it's got to this point and that uh, one of the busiest uh, airports in southeastern Manitoba, and, and probably could be uh, in many, uh, busier in many parts of Canada, but the, that there wasn't more discussion and more uh, of an impact study done in some form. So absolutely, we need to send a letter of support. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Heber. I too, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too agree with the comments that have been made. And I too find it interesting that Transport Canada and other government agencies would have entertained a tower of this height and size in this location. Uh, I'm familiar with Harv's Air and they don't only have students from Steinbeck, from Manitoba or Canada, North America. They have student, international students from all over the world that are flying here. And to have a tower that close to a airport that is that busy, it doesn't seem rational. So, uh, you know, safety concerns are paramount. And, uh, and like uh, Councillor Siemens has said, it's, uh, they're an integral part of our community. So. Uh, I appreciate the comments by Swe uh, Councillor Swijkstra in uh, writing a letter in support of Harv's Air that this is not an appropriate location for a tower of this size. Thank you. Anything further? Anything in closing? Well, Council, uh, I believe that this is a good idea. I think this is it's so support for a business. In reality, the top portion of their, like the northern portion of their runway is in, is in Steinbeck 
in the city of Steinbach. The rest of the business is in is in the arm of Hanover. But I think it's very important that we represent a, a, a Steinbach business because they are in our they're in our community. There is a great economic spinoff with the pilots that come. They all live in our community, and and I think it it's uh, it's important that we show. Our, our support to this and that we help out in this in this way and uh, because all businesses in in Steinbach are important to us it is it's what drives our engine it, it what gives us our growth and it, it helps us um, continue to move into the future and so uh, although we have we don't have a lot of say in where these towers go this is a federal decision we do we are allowed to comment we can be a commenting agent and in, in a way to write a letter and in support and 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 break out and itemize the, the the challenges we have with this is the way to comment in this case so call for the question all's in favor opposed that is carried thank you uh, is uh, there's no other business looking for a motion to adjourn Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Hebert. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> that is carried. Next council meeting is Tuesday, October 1st, 2024, at 7.30. Thank you. Thank you.